How's it going out there, fellow man decked, man affected, affected, Mandela affected, whatever you want to call it. But if you're watching this video, you're probably looking for answers, um, or maybe you already have answers and you just want more information. Um, so, this video isn't to try and convince you of the Mandela affected. I would just like to try and share some of my research with people out there, and uh, in hopes that I will continue to make videos, um, putting out more of my thoughts and more of my research. Um, <clears throat> the Mandela Effect, extremely interesting. Uh, when did the Mandela Effect kick off? It seems to me a lot of people think it kicked off in 2012. Although uh, it seems that it kicked up around 2015, it really went into high gear. Most of the videos that I find on YouTube that really, um, a lot of channels seem to start around 2015 uh, for the Mandela Effect. Um, <clears throat> What is the Mandela Effect? You know, not to get into it too deep because you probably already know what it is, but it basically deals with incorrect memories or different memories. People that have memories separate um, from others. And those memories that they have are all shared memories. There's not like there's multiple groups of memories. There's only two sets of memories um, shared between all the groups of people. And there's only three groups, which we'll get in, into in a minute. Um, <clears throat> But what are the incorrect memories? Uh, the incorrect memories can be labels, events, places, movies, time. Uh, basically, people, places, and time. Uh, <clears throat> more so the labels uh, seem to be very interesting. Um, <clears throat> multiple labels have changed. Uh, Captain Crunch was no longer spelled the same. OxyClean, Fruit Loops, Monopoly Man uh, no, no longer wears a monocle. Uh, I know for a fact OxyClean was spelled with a Y, but now apparently it's spelled with an I. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, some of the events, the JFK vehicle, uh, it's no longer a four-seater, apparently now it's a six-seater. The Tiananmen Tank Man lives, he doesn't die anymore, and Mandela's death. Uh, the places, places, also very interesting. The world map seems to have changed, where South America is now underneath North America. And the Statue of Liberty is no longer on Ellis Island. It's, it's on Liberty Island. That's crazy, right? Uh, some of the movies, uh, the Forrest Gump, Star Wars, I'm not going to get into it, you guys know the movies. Uh, <clears throat> in time, celebrity deaths, Hugh Hefner, and people who seem to suffer from the Mandela effect or infection or whatever it is, um, they seem to have missing time, time lapses. Uh, some people feel like they've lived many more years than they actually can remember, some feel less. Um, extremely interesting. Uh, there is only three groups of people walking the, the face of the earth right now. You have group A, who is the affected and infected. Um, like I said, they all share most of the same memories. Pretty much all of them will have all these same memories in the same way, the same form. None of them will differ. Um, and these are the incorrect memories according to history. Uh, and then you have group B. Group B, I found the least amount of people of. Group B is the immune or the unaffected. Group B shares none of the same memories that, that Group A has. Group B remembers history exactly as it is. Uh, they don't remember any of the same movies or any of that. I think it's also um, extremely important that I note on here also the body changes. Um, underneath people here, I, I actually forgot to write that on there, but yes, body changes. Um, so the group B doesn't remember any of the body changes, any of the time changes, any of the movies, places, events. They remember everything exactly as it is, exactly as history records it. Um, the group C has mixed memories of group A and group B. Um, group C, I found people where um, they're all convinced that the Statue of Liberty was on Ellis Island, but they're not sure about Fruit Loops or Captain Crunch. Um, it, it, it is very interesting. Uh, group C, the ones that have the mixed group of memories. Uh, so there is really only three groups. The people that I seem to find to be most affected by this are between the ages of 25 and 65. Uh, I found all different ethnic backgrounds. Every skin color you can think of, all different regions. Um, Everyone seems to be dealing with this uh, blood type. Um, is, it, is it more certain blood types? That I don't really know. Um, that would that, be a very interesting to find out. Um, the Mandela effect of what are blood types. Um, and then regions. 
I have found mainly UN areas, although the Ukraine, there's some videos out of there, but also UN has its hands in there. Um, China's internet is on lockdown, and I haven't really seen anything out of Russia. So that's very interesting. If anyone has anything directly out of Russia, I'd love to see it. Um, but like I said, it, it's very important to note that very, there's very few of Group B. Very, very few. There seems to be more of Group C, people that have mixed memories. But it's very important to note um, the disinformation because um, there's a lot of disinformation out there uh, going on with the Mandela effect. Like take the Queen song, for instance. The Queen song people will cite over and over again. Uh, but you don't really want to be citing the Queen song because Queen actually did say, you know, sing of, of the world uh, at the end of the concert. So they did say that, they did sing it, so that's why people can't remember it and you can't attribute it, the whole missed memory to that. Also, the Lord's Prayer, um, that's one that you don't want to go quoting because the Lord's Prayer is written in different books, it always has been, and I know it's a shock to some people, but that really is the way it is. Um, and then Oreo stuff, over in England, stuff is spelled with two Fs, over here it's one, but I do believe back in the day it was spelled with two, but you don't want to go quoting that. There is a lot, a lot of misinformation um, out there to confuse people about the subject. Um, I think one thing that the people people are really interested in is why. Why is this happening? Like, who caused it? You know, time travel. Time travel is very interesting if you think about time travel. You know, did, did they go back in time and change something? Uh, you know, let's let's make a make, let's make a little room up here. And, Let's say that someone, we're going to put a P for present day. And let's say someone goes back in time. We're going to, and, and we know um, that they had to go back to the days of the Bible because there are changes in the Bible. Um, the Bible no longer now says wolf instead of, instead of lion. Very interesting. So present day, let's say they went all the way back to the time of Jesus. And they changed some stuff back there. There could be a ripple effect that goes all the way forward to here, and that's all fine and great. But if you really pay attention to physics, what's going to happen when someone goes back and they change something? It's, there's going to be like a little gap. And there's going to be a paradox. There's going to be a new spin-off. We've all seen the movie, blah, 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 blah. But there's plenty of great lectures on time travel on YouTube. You can watch all kinds of universities, people lecturing time travel. I, I've watched a lot of them. <clears throat> so my belief in general consensus is if you go back in time, you change something, there's going to be some other paradox line that comes off of here. And that's all great. So it isn't really going to affect anything here. It's not going to like change everything on this one timeline. It will create another paradox. So we shouldn't really notice it. It would just create a new paradox over here. Now a theory that I do have is that due to the quantum computing and the D-wave being able to access parallel universes, Every time you go back in time and you create another paradox, you would think it would create all the other parallel universes off of that timeline. Because you're creating a whole other timeline. But this line is still going to exist. Because you just went back. This isn't just going to disappear like on, like on Back to the Future. That doesn't just go away. It just creates a whole other thing. This is going to keep on going, but you can never get back to it. You're stuck on this. Um, you're essentially stuck here. So, if you, if you understand parallel universes, here's you, and you're the center of your universe, not the universe, your universe. And there's all kinds of parallel universes off of you. There's rings, all these parallel universes. And as you get further out, billions of them out, they get crazier and crazier. Only like one or two out, you might not even notice a difference at all. There's probably absolutely no difference in it at all. It's the parallel dimension. It's right outside of yours. I know I kept calling the universe, but I meant to say dimension. You have parallel dimensions all outside of you. You're the center of your universe. And outside of these are all your parallel dimensions. And maybe when you get out to like the hundredth, billionth, 
dimension, and who knows how far out. <clears throat> you get like three-headed dragons and all this wild stuff and poisonous white caterpillars and things and all the kind of crazy animals we see in the trees. So what if, because we know of the Montauk Project and the Philadelphia Experiment and all the stuff they've been messing around, they probably have time travel, they probably have gone back to Jesus, they've probably gone all the way further back to the time of the dinosaurs, um, <clears throat> just look at all of a sudden changes with what they say about the dinosaurs, that's a whole other video in itself. So they've gone back and done all these things. They've probably gone back and changed something here. And they've probably gone back and changed something here. Because that's what they do. They're greedy. They want to go back and change all kinds of things. What it's going to do, because every time it changes, all these different people that it affected are all these different people off of this new spread timeline. And off of this new spread timeline, you're going to have all these other dimensions. Now, I, what I believe with quantum computing, and because they've been screwing around with the timeline so much, it gives the quantum computing people for, at D-Wave infinite more universes to go and grab pieces from. So let's just, you know, let's just say they went back in time to, I don't know, JFK. They go back in time to JFK. And maybe they do something. And whatever they do, for whatever reason, maybe they try to prevent the shooting, they figure if they put, put them in, I don't know, I'm just, maybe they go back and do something. And that's why there's now a six-seater. Now, hold, hang on, I'm going to get to the quantum computing thing. So now there's a six-seater. You have all these other parallel universes off of whatever they did, on top of whatever they did over here, on top of whatever they did over here. So now rather than this one timeline, and I'm sure there's plenty of other time travelers out there, uh, the quantum computing people can actually go in and selectively grab things out of here, including people. So they send the person back in time, and the person does something. They create an event, right? And they're stuck on this timeline. Because of the quantum computing, they can go into this timeline on this paradox and grab whatever they want, including a person that they sent back to change an event on a parallel event, and they can bring them back. Or even further than that, maybe they can drag. Maybe they can drag this whole other paradox into ours, as long as it's not too far out, and most of the information bleeds over into ours, into our reality, or universe, or dimension, however this whole thing really works, because these are all just theories. Maybe they're actually able to drag this whole thing over and grab selective pieces out. <clears throat> Hence, the very subtle changes, like the why, like the Monopoly man not having a monocle, like the six-seater car. Um, maybe they're actually able to selectively grab things and drag them over. You know, so every time, every time you go back in time, you're going back in time. You're gonna create. You're gonna create another, another paradox that comes down and off. All right. You can't get back to your other timeline. You can't jump paradoxes. You're stuck here. If you go back in time, or if you go forward in time, so to say, to get back to where you were, you're just going to end up on that same, that same paradox. You're not going to be able to go back over to this dimension. You've created like a new one, so to say. Um, so because of the D-Wave and the quantum computing, is it quite possible that they now have the ability to retrieve people that have like gone back in time and done things and bring that back over to this? I don't know. It's possible. Maybe the, everything's bleeding over. Maybe like I said in that last video, everything's bleeding over. I'm not really sure. Um, but as far as the time travel thing goes, that's kind of how the time travel thing would have to work. Uh, if they were to just go back in time and change an event, like say kill Hitler, and then it just keeps going on forward, maybe there's some ripple effect. It's possible, I'm not a physicist, 
But from what I understand from most of the videos that I've watched on YouTube from leading physicists and quantum physicists and things, um, when, you, when you go back in time and you change something, it creates another paradox, and, it, and you, you would be stuck on this paradox. You would be stuck in that future. From whatever, whatever change you made, you'd be stuck there. But this line is still going to keep going. You just can't get back over here. But now with the use of quantum computing, how they say they can actually reach over to the other dimensions. When you go back and change this thing, you make different decisions, it creates all these other dimensions. Maybe they can actually, like I said, go back in and grab you and retrieve you and bring you back over, or maybe suck that whole other parallel thing back in. Um, I don't know, just thought for you, the Mandela effect is real. <laughs>